subtle art of not giving AF summary. The subtle art of not giving AF does away with the positive psychology craze to instead give you a stoic, no bullshit approach to living a life that might not always be happy but meaningful and centered only around what's important to you. For as much as I love positive psychology, sometimes it just doesn't work, even for me. There's another mode that might sound odd but still works, toiling. Do you know how you have the occasional week where it's just grinding? Even if you usually like your job, nothing exciting happens for a few days, you have a lot of deadlines, and you just toil away to get it done. It's the mode I'm in right now, weirdly, it's still kind of satisfying. Probably, because it feels liberating not to ooze happy vibes all the time. Blogging demigod Mark Manson has coined a better phrase for this mode of operation, the subtle art of not giving AF. His first, proper, book, this instant New York Times bestseller, is a no BS self-help book for people who usually hate self-help. Mark gets that life has become overwhelming, and the only way to find our center around the things that matter to us is to not give an F about anything else. Top 3 Takeaways 1. Values you can't control are wrong values to follow. 2. Don't believe you know anything with certainty, for it keeps you from improving. 3. Trying to leave a legacy might ruin your life. The trick of not giving an F about most things is that you'll be able to provide one about what matters to you. Let's see how we can get a bit closer to that. Lesson 1. Only hold values you control. Mark is a very stoic guy, and it shines through his writing and advice. A common idea in Stoicism is to focus only on the things you can control. This is easy enough to understand and implement regarding your actions. Still, it can also be applied to more intangible aspects of your life. Take your values, for example. I know it's hard to put them into words, but if you try to describe yourself in three adjectives, you already know which values dictate your life. Let's say you chose the words honest, punctual, and popular. Here's where Mark makes an interesting remark, only choose to have values you can control. Most of us give up some of our ideals as we grow up, try to have a career, and make money. While that's just part of real life, you mustn't hand off the steering wheel altogether. Values you don't control are wrong because they'll be a constant source of unnecessary suffering in your life. When we examine the three mentioned above, honesty is 100% in your control. Only you know how honest you are, but no one else needs to. Punctuality is partially in your possession. You can compensate for most potential obstacles if you always leave with plenty of buffer time. Popularity, however, is totally out of your grasp. You can be nice and friendly to everyone but you can't control other people's opinions. Some will always hate you, no matter what you do. Therefore, popularity isn't the best value to focus on. You could try replacing it with one more controllable, such as kindness. Lesson 2. Certainty hampers growth. What a great principle distilled into just three words, certainty hampers growth. Imagine you could choose between two modes of moving through the world, one in which you think everything you know is 100% true and one in which you feel nothing you know is 100% true. Both are stressful, but which one do you think would help you make better decisions? The second kind is more implicit knowledge about the relationships between various entities. Let's take your place in the social hierarchy at school, for example. If you're convinced you're ugly, you'll be sad. But if you notice that you get lots of compliments at school, people call you charming, and some have a crush on you, that's evidence your brain is playing you with false certainty. If you allow yourself to have a little doubt, you can then disprove this limiting belief you hold about yourself. Lesson 3. Don't obsess about leaving a legacy. Here's an uncomfortable but essential reminder, you'll die one day. We all are. Whether we admit it or not, we're all scared when the time comes closer. Many of us want to leave a legacy, myself included. 
However, Mark says that might ruin our short amount of precious time here on Earth. The more we're driven to build a significant body of work, the more we start chasing fame, working too much, and focusing on the future. What if, instead, we just tried to be helpful in the present? We could still help a ton of people, enjoy our days, and be here while we're here. Mark's stance is clear, find ways to bring yourself, your loved ones, and the people you meet joy in the now and let the legacy part take care of itself. Mark's writing is funny and to the point. No bullshit, lots of curse words, but lots of insight too. It's a medium-long book with just over 200 pages, but it is light in terms of how fast you get through because Mark uses many examples too. What else can you learn from the blinks? The weird paradox that surrounds finding happiness in our life. A subtle identity problem all advertising causes in us. Why, do something, is a great principle to live by. How you're doing others a favor when you say, no, to them. Who would I recommend the subtle art of not giving a f summary to? The 21-year-old software engineer who thinks about quitting his first job after six months because it's not fun. The 45-year-old fighter pilot who couldn't care less about self-help and anyone who hopes to become a mega-successful artist. Thank you for joining us here at the Chill Out Boutique. Please help us grow by hitting that like button and subscribing to our channel. Until our next video, remember to chill out and relax.